Hey guys, thanks for joining. I'm Shannon, if you haven't seen me before. Uh, I live in a vintage Airstream, so my cooking is going to be based around cooking for one or two people uh, for the most part, and every now and then if there's going to be like some big things where I'm going to feed more than one, one or two people, meaning me or anybody else actually, um, then if we do some stuff outside or how to manage um, cooking for more than that in a tiny space, but I uh, just wanted to kind of get started with a recipe that is one of my favorites. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't have all of the ingredients that I usually do in this recipe. This is uh, an impromptu thing. I had most of the stuff that I needed. It's still going to be good. Um, so I'm not going to give you a lot of the ingredient mix setup and stuff, but there's a recipe on my website called uh, Gypsy Plants and Leaves. I'll put the link down below. For you so you can find that easily and then I will probably cut and paste it into the description uh, below for the video so um, hopefully uh, you'll give this one a shot the proof in this one is that this recipe works pretty much with anything you have in the fridge so it will be um, so don't worry about always having the exact ingredients okay um, I'm gonna give you uh, Basically, we're just going to kind of go through it, and then I will show you how I finish it. One part of this video, the spaghetti squash, is actually on a separate video because it can be used for multiple things, so I didn't want to um, tie it just specifically to this video, and I wanted people to be able to pull it up. So, anyway, be sure to like, subscribe, and share if you like what you're seeing, and let's get cooking. All right, so I've got my trusty little pan here. Now, I have a four-burner... 24 inch magic chef stove that I'll put a link to down below in the video if you're curious about it and if you're watching this looking for um, what you can do in a tiny space and how much you can get out of a small thing. A lot of people have two burner, three burner stoves in their RV but um, I just couldn't, I had to give up that last two inches. If it was only going to take up 22 inches or 20 inches, give me the extra four and give me another burner, right? So. Um, anyway, so in the pan I have got a light sesame oil. You can use a toasted sesame oil. I will probably finish with just a touch so I get a little bit extra of that sesame at the end. Um, to start, I'm going to throw in, um, this is what I had in the fridge. Brussels sprouts, carrots, broccoli, or yellow bell pepper, some snow peas and some onion. I've always got garlic around and I've got some arugula I'm going to throw in there too. So I'm going to start with the broccoli. So I get everything prepped up early because this is going to cook really quick um, because this is a an Asian inspired dish you don't want to you want to keep everything nice and fresh and crisp broccoli will take a little bit longer to cook than most everything because you know it's a little bit sturdier and woody now a lot of times people will not use the stem there's nothing wrong with the stem it still tastes like broccoli so just to show you I go ahead and cut them up and use it and throw it in my saute because there's like I said, there's nothing wrong with it there's no reason not to yellow bell pepper I just happen to have that one I tend to like to do a red one because it's for color um, I can't eat green bell peppers they make my stomach hurt so these are great uh, just nice little julienne on that throw that in cut some carrots because that's going to take a little bit longer to cut I'll show you just how quick this thing is once you got everything prepped up. And I want this to stay nice and fresh. And hit with a little salt. Now there is a little bit of salt from the soy sauce that's in the, um, of course, in the sauce. So go kind of easy on the salt. You can always add more later. We're going to add some onion. I think the recipe actually calls for scallions, but I had onion. So we're going with onion. You can add some tofu to this if you like. You can add, if you're not vegan or vegetarian, um, to each his own. You can add chicken. If you do add a chicken or beef, saute that off first and brown it and get that nice and, and then remove it from the pan and then add your vegetables. Cook all of that 
and then once you get, um, you can add your animal product back in later. I encourage, as often as possible, if you don't cook with vegetables, try to give yourself a meatless Monday, try to do meat only one meal a day, try to do meat only on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or save it for when you're going out with friends. If you go to a restaurant, it doesn't give you a lot of options. Uh, but try to reduce your meat consumption. One, for your health, but two, for the environment. People don't realize how much um, the environment is affected by um, agricultural for agriculture for animals. So there's my soapbox for the day. All right. These are getting nice and soft. But I don't want to cook them for too long because I don't want them to get mushy. Or close. I have some shredded Brussels sprouts. I'm going to throw that in there too. Just a little bit more sesame oil in there. That probably would be the time when I would add. Sorry, come back. I'm going to add the toasted sesame oil just for that slightly nuttier flavor. Because this is getting close to the end. Where I want this. I'm going to add the garlic now. There's nothing worse and nothing that's going to ruin a dish for you like burnt garlic. So don't put that in early if you don't need it to. And you can dice it up if you don't like it uh, larger. I like garlic cooked in the, uh, cut in these, sliced in these nice little thin layers. Because uh, once that softens, that garlic sweetens up. So that goes in. So you can do that last minute or towards the end. Just because you don't want to burn it. You want it to taste like garlic, not taste like, not for everything to taste like burnt dead garlic. All right, so as you can see, this has taken like five minutes, right? Um, and then I've got sugar snap peas. Now, I don't like cooked sugar snap peas. I don't, they get weird and get a little bit bitter. On their own, they taste like sugar, right? So I'm gonna julienne those up, or kind of cut those on an angle, angle kind of get that cool little Asian inspired shape. Toss those in. That is going to literally just heat through. So as you can see, isn't that gorgeous? And that is pretty much all I want to do as far as cooking that. So almost like a really traditional stir fry. I'll go ahead and turn that heat off. If it's still nice and hot. Reason being, when you put this sauce in, now in this case, I was missing a few ingredients, but I have in this maypoi sweet chili. I've got tamari, gluten-free soy. I've got a little sriracha. I've got some lemon juice, and I've got almond butter. Now, like I said, I don't like peanut butter, so I use almond butter. And I kind of like that little bit of that graininess from, the, from that. And uh, did I tell you the lemon juice? Got a little lemon juice. So just now that this is chilled just a little bit, go ahead and pour that in. If you do it too, um, uh, with, the, with the temperature too high, it's going to bubble like crazy. Let's go. Give that a nice toss. This is going to thicken up a lot. The water that I put in there because I do put a little bit of water to thin it out knowing that it's going to thicken up like that. Put this sauce out and you're not going to need to thicken it with anything. Because like I said, once that hits that pan and that moisture cooks out, you are golden. All right. Isn't that gorgeous? really got to get a different pan. I bought these pans. I'll go, I'm going to, I've got an eye, my eye on some pans that I'm going to switch to. Uh, and this red pan, although handy, because it is a ceramic, I don't like Teflon. I spot on people. Um, 
it is, um, the red is awful for watching for food, right? All right, so you saw my, you saw my video the other day for my spaghetti squash. I'll list the, um, the type of knife I have below. This had just been cool. Now I have heated this up in the oven. Typically I would probably saute it, but I have just heated this up in the oven while we were doing the video. And then I'm going to also do it with a little bit of arugula. So, but I think, and I haven't done it, I think I'm going to do it a little bit different. So let me do some video adjusting and I will show you how I'm going to plate this up. All right, so I've got my uh, spaghetti squash. Now I'm going to serve this with a little bit of arugula because I like the um, just the bitterness of the arugula. So instead of making a bit uh, like a well of the spaghetti squash, I'm going to make a bed of it. Now I like using the spaghetti squash just because one, I love the texture. But, um, you know, it pretty much tastes like, it's got a touch of sweetness to it. Pretty much tastes like whatever you put with it. Let's see. Let's put a little of this right on top. Now, I add a little bit more, probably, sriracha and stuff. Adjust the heat when you see the recipe to however you prefer. No written in stone that it has to be spicy. I just happen to like spicy. Decor. And if you want just the tiniest little drizzle of the toasted sesame oil on those greens. And that, my friends, is a beautiful plate. So enjoy! So like I said, super quick and easy. Only took about 10 minutes max, I think, with dicing up the vegetables, it's dicing and slicing and all that kind of good stuff. Took, uh, you might get 20 minutes in it, all total. Um, and no matter what vegetables you put in it, it's gonna work. I wouldn't put anything like super soft. I wouldn't, unless you're gonna throw them in last minute. Some little diced tomatoes would be nice, that type of thing. Uh, but as you can see, super simple. Here's the perk. When you use spaghetti squash for it, even if you put it all in one to-go dish for saving the next day, it's gonna taste just like it did the day before. This stuff doesn't break down, that kind of stuff works out great. So anyway, be sure and check in uh, on Wednesdays to see if I've posted a new video. Be sure to hit that little bell if you wanna make sure you don't miss one. And then of course I've got, I'll have the recipes um, on the site as well as my blog uh, called Gypsy Plants and Leaves. So I'll see you next time. Thanks.